Um, before we start, I think we should just make one uh, little thing clear, which is that we're about to talk about digital printing. And this actually means machines that work digitally, but actually print something on a piece of paper. There have been so many because of conversations about digital here. We're still talking about things that end up on paper, but by, you know, a technology that Gutenberg wouldn't probably recognise. Yeah. And I guess the, so the, the sort of the first thing about this year's entries is that there are quite a lot of labels. And, and I wondered if you wanted to talk us through some, some of those entries. Absolutely, absolutely. Welcome, everybody, first of all. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, yes, well, we see a lot of labels printed in digital this year. And I think this is for different reasons. First of all, uh, because uh, we are, uh, well, the labels industry is an industry where you can uh, I think showed the most, uh, to be honest, maybe about digital, and uh, you can play a lot around it. And uh, also because uh, we have a m movement, uh, we say before, uh, they say, my, my co-worker in the jury, that we don't speak about trends, uh, because trends is something actually that uh, is actual, but uh, there is uh, a movement uh, at the moment uh, of, let's say, playing a lot uh, in the label industry, and we play it uh, in different ways. For example, we have uh, the dual witch gene that we can see on the screen behind me. That is a good example of this where we can see something that uh, you can do just with digital which is uh, variable data so, so every bottle is unique exactly every bottle is unique every bottle is different this is made with a process that the name is uh, mosaic where uh, basically you you define some part uh, on the on the paper and you are going to change mm -hmm. the color uh, that you have uh, in uh, in the different so, papers so here we're seeing images and exactly. colors changing exactly and so you are creating a unique object so you you your brand will be identify on the on the market because it's the same but what you're going to see difference is that you're going to have a unique product so, so this is edition. a way for a brand to convince uh, the distribution point to buy Lots exactly, exactly, and share it on social media, so give yeah. a brand identity and moving in this direction. Another example of this uh, is uh, another gene that uh, is uh, the, um, the last colony gene. Uh, this is another example uh, in this case of versioning because uh, here I really like this project because uh, it's a work between different kind of papers as well. And uh, I think uh, it can, um, well, it show a lot of versioning as well. So we see this one of the gene, for example, but there is uh, a category all of all of them so what i can see i can identify my product on the on on the market even if they are different products close uh, one close to the other as we can see here yeah, so those, here we've got the exactly. gin and, and, and various exactly. wine bottles. exactly so this is something that we can notice in uh, in this project as well and i suppose the, the other thing about some of this year's entries is that initially digital printing had rather a bad reputation for the way it would print on paper and you know it, it, the impression was that actually you just you could just print on white paper but we've actually got a couple of entries that are really strong uh, yes. on, on <laughs> using color on, on colored paper yes that's correct uh, there are two samples that uh, i wanted to say I, I would like to mention it today one is this one that is object and subject which is a product that speak about uh, I, I guess the power of the woman that we can see in terms of color but also the kind of paper that got used because uh, if we can see here a very strong uh, Pa uh, very strong colors uh, used. Uh, we can also see that the paper, if you touch it, uh, as I did, uh, is very light papers. So it's a contra contradiction as well uh, in um, what, uh, what, what a woman is eating at the end of the day as and, well. And these colors are not special colors, these are just CMYK, CMYK colors. colors correct, correct. And another example that can show this, uh, let's say, synchronization between colors and the paper is this project about Moon, where uh, we can see that uh, is printed uh, actually on uh, is a white a premium white inks by HP Indigo that is printed on black material. So here so, there is just the color basically. Yeah. So in a way, it's a complete inversion of the exactly. way you might handle exactly. this job in LIFO which is you take black, you here you take black paper and you print with white inks. Exactly. And you can lay the white inks down multiple times to increase their, the, their yeah, weight. Yes, exactly. And also it's very nice, uh, they had um, die cut that it was done. Yes, yeah, so to make it, it, uh, as you open the book, exactly. the phases of the moon are, are revealed to you. I mean, yeah. it's a remarkable uh, piece of visual design. Exactly. So we just saw a little hint. This is um, <laughs> this is a uh, Brazilian uh, magazine called Typographia, 
which is about the history of type and graphic design. Uh, but one of the fascinating things about it is that it's a mixture of letterpress printing, so the, the most old-fashioned printing technology, and Digital. color sections printed on the on the Indigo Press. Yes, and this is what is make this project unique, I think, because uh, it can show you, because a lot of people think that uh, digital uh, is just uh, something that it cannot be, you know, com compare, or it cannot be used with, uh, let's say, old technology or uh, more, more old technology than digital. But this is not true, because this is a good example of how I can mix uh, letterpress, which is one of the oldest kind of technology that you can use with, uh, for printing with digital, which is one of the newest one, and you can create a unique product that is completely working uh, good no, it's together. An, it's an amazing, yes. uh, amazing thing. In fact, uh, Wan and I had to get his loop out earlier to work out which were the letterpress pages and and which were the <laughs> you know the, the digital pages. I think this is from the next. This is from the thing. next one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So, I, no, 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 no. It's just a, just a hint, of, it's a hint <laughs> of what's to come. Um, we we been talking about training and how graphic designers and young graphic designers uh, get to uh, know about sustainability and other issues but I guess the thing with the digital printing machines is that it's quite difficult now to pop down to your local printers even if it wasn't for the, the pandemic printers tend to be out of town and they you know they're not quite as welcoming how but, but understanding how these machines work and what their capabilities and their strengths are uh, and why they're different from conventional printing is pretty important. So how do you, how do, you do that? How do you train the next generation of graphic designers? This is a very good question because it's a very big challenge also for us. I mean, we are asking ourselves, ourselves this question a lot of time, to be honest. And I think everything, I mean, you have to be a work together. So every part of the supply chain should work in this direction, to be honest, as as provider of the technology, but also our customer that they're using the te this technology, they have to give the possibility to the graphic designer to see what they can be done with this kind of technology to make in this more unknown and aware about the possibility of digital. Yeah, because I, I, we can look at these examples, but in fact, a lot of the story about digital is the story of the workflow and the story that exactly. you can make one copy exactly in a way that is impossible in other methods or incredibly expensive. But, um, but this means that you need to have the whole value chain downstream adjusting to digital printing. Whoops. Uh, yes, I mean, I think with if you take something like book on demand book printing, yeah, actually, in a way, printing one copy of the book is the easy bit. Binding one copy perfectly, getting it in the right envelope, going to the right person, yeah, and having that account automatically fulfilled. That, that's the that's the bit that all the com the concentrations on now, isn't it? Correct, correct. Like it uh, is a workflow process, uh, as we just said. Like I mean, you have to start from uh, well, from from the order as well. If we're speaking about the book of one, for example, I don't know from from the book on delivery or whatever product on delivery, to be honest, because at the moment also in the packaging industry, they're moving in that direction. So starting from that point, uh, you have to have a supply chain that is working in that direction. So from, from the order online until the delivery to the customer side. And in a way, sustainability is built into that process because people can ask the question, what well, really, how many copies do I yes. need? Not, oh, let's have 5,000 copies for the warehouse, but this is the specific number and if we run out well we can just print we print some more that's correct um, and if you have a something that you have chosen maybe with your name on top yes. i don't think you're going to throw it away that easily exactly maybe it's going to last a bit exactly. longer exactly in your home or on your desk yeah so i think it, it you know there's a whole set of new digital possibilities including the inks including the run length including the kind of materials you can you can print on yes Thank you very much. If there are questions from the audience, we'd like to take them. Oh, here's oh, one. Yes, sir. The opinion will change. Do you think digital printing will change the way that to design projects as it gives some new possibilities? Can I answer? 
Yeah. No, I think <laughs> this, is your, this is your this is your go. <laughs> I think yes. I mean, I think he has already changed. Uh, if we see already some campaign that they're resisting, so we are moving uh, in the short run direction, but we are also moving in a lot of limited edition. Like I don't know to mention just the, the Nutella campaign with the name on top of those kind of campaigns. Uh, I think that uh, the design is moving in a direction uh, where people want a unique product uh, and they want. Uh, a product that is just for themselves. So I think that the change is already happening. It's not something that is going to happen in the future. Maybe a, a lot more, but uh, it's already there. And I, I think all the kind of web to print uh, workflows that go with these machines are completely changing the kind of graphic design that is done. It's wide, hugely expanding the area of people who call themselves, you know, graphic designers because I call myself a graphic designer, but people don't need me anymore. They've, they've got a Mac, they've got the, um, the web address for a web to print company. They can shoot it off all by themselves. Without ever interacting with the printer? Um, well, the interaction is, not, is an online interaction. And I think, you know, one of the things about having a huge installed base of similar machines is we're seeing people saying, well, we can print this book in Italy for one copy and we can print this book in Shanghai for one copy and we're using the same printing machine and the same paper and the same so the, yeah, yeah so the books will be the same and that means you don't have to ship that copy to Shanghai you don't have to ship that copy from China to Milan yes. it, it, it's uh, it, it, I think we're only really beginning to understand the the possibilities that go with the digital machines wow Thank you very much. Thank this you. This is to really you. exciting. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Martina. Simon, you're actually going to stay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>